Okay, right now what we're going to be looking at is going to be the uh, meninges of the brain and spinal cord. Um, the layers of the meninge, uh, we can use a diagram here real quick. Let me grab this diagram. Um, you pretty much, um, you have three layers of the meninge. Uh, you have the dura layer, which is... Um, the layer that's right under the skull. So this, this, here's the skull, and then you have the dura layer right under. Now the dura layer is made up of two. Actually, let me just draw it out here. So let's just say this is the skull. This is the skull here. Now right below that you have um, the dura layer. Now the dura layer is continuous with the actual skull. Now, the dura layer is made up of two layers, periosteal layer and meningeal layer, and they're usually stuck to each other in s except um, at the uh, sagittal sinus right here. Uh, at the uh, sinuses, cavernous sinuses. Um, then below that, we're going to have another layer, which is going to be the, uh, cavern uh, the ar ar arachnoid layer, which is going to go below the dura layer, and then uh, after that, we're going to have the uh, pia matter. Now, actually, the pia matter is going to actually go around every single fold and sinus that's in the brain, right there. Um, so this is pretty much going to be the three layers. So just to recap, um, the first layer is going to be your dura, dura matter. The second layer is going to be your um, arachnoid layer. And the third layer is going to be your pia matter. Sorry, arachnoid matter. And it's going to be your pia matter. Now, between the arachnoid layer and the pia matter, uh, we have uh, little projections. Oops, sorry, this way. We have little projections that's going to go out this way. So, you're going to have these little projections. And then floating in between is going to be uh, this is going to be all the CSF fluid so CSF fluid is going to be between the arachnoid layer and the pia matter and what do we have here this area right here is going to be the superior sagittal sinus so I can actually I'll show you just write that superior sagittal sinus so let's first focus kind of um, Look on a bigger level at um, the arachnoid, the, the, the dura matter first. So, because it is, it is kind of the more uh, complicated one. So, the dura matter is a uh, thick fibrous tissue. Um, it's made up of two layers. Again, uh, it's made up of a periosteal layer. So, it's going to be first made up of a periosteal layer, which follows the the, the skull, and it's made up of a meningeal layer which is touching the arachnoid uh, matter. Um, now, there's a few places um, where it actually, the, um, the dura matter folds in. And these are really, really important to know. So, let's talk about those uh, places right now. The first one is going to be the fox cerebri. So the first one that's important to know is going to be the fox cerebri. Now the fox cerebri, what does it do? It actually, it's going to just primarily, it's going to separate the two brain hemispheres. And um, you can't really see it here, but um, if I could just kind of draw out, uh, this is the skull. This is the, um, you have that, you go like that. You yeah, have this, and you have the foramen magnum here. Um, right here, we have the crystal galley, and so um, what's going to happen is you're going to have the fox cerebri go from the crystal galley here, and then there. So this is going to be basically the Fox rewrite in 3D. And so what does it extend to? It extends from the crystal galley 
uh, all the way to the back, sorry, I should actually go to the back here, to the um, occipital protuberance. Basically the occipital uh, layer. And so the, again, what does it do? It, it separates uh, right and left. Now the other one, uh, the other major infolding of dura matter is going to be the tentorium cerebelli. Tentorium cerebelli is going to primarily is going to separate the cerebellum from the uh, cerebri. So uh, right here, this flat kind of area here. So it's just, you probably want to look at it like that. This right here is the tentorium cerebelli. Now, um, if I can just draw this as well. So it's a tentorium cerebelli. If we have, if we're kind of looking at the top, this is the nose, that's the ears. Uh, this is going to be. There you go, protrusal there and the form and magnum. Um, what it looks like, I'm gonna do it in green, is um, it's gonna it's gonna have a kind of gonna extend like that, and it's gonna go out. So it's gonna connect to the protrusal part of the uh, cranium, and it's gonna go all the way out to the back. And you can see it goes around the form and magnum. It doesn't actually go, uh, doesn't really cover that up. And this area right here uh, is, is special. This is called the uh, incisora tentori and it allows the um, it allows the brainstem to go through there. Um, now what we also have, just kind of two smaller ones, you have a di diaphragma cella which is going to, it's basically right here, it just allows the pituitary stalk to go through, uh, it just surrounds the pituitary stalk, and you also have the fox cerebella, and basically what you want to do is just think if the fox cerebri continues down and it splits up the um, cerebellum, and that's pretty much what you're going to have. Now, um, these become important in times uh, when we're looking at uh, brain herniations. So, um, it's down. Oops. Okay. So we have that. There you go. So um, if you have a supertentorial mass that we have right here, this will cause the brain to shift, and th this is when the different dura matters, like the fox cerebri, cerebri, and the tentorium cerebri, become. Uh, important. So the fox cerebri actually doesn't go all the way down. It just stops right there. And then your tentorium goes here and here. And this is the incisora. Uh, sorry, here is the uh, as it goes down here. This is the incisora. Uh, actually, that's right there. The incisora uh, tentori. Um, now, what happens when you have a? Uh, you can have two types of herniations. Uh, the first type of herniation that you can have is going to be the subthalseal subthalsial uh, herniation and that's this first one right here and it's just going to go uh, straight across now what's uh, what's involved in the subthalsial herniation the primary thing that's going to be moving is going to be the cingulate gyrus um, and so what, what primarily gets affected which is going to be clinically important is going to affect the anterior uh, cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery, because because it's happening in the frontal lobe, you're going to have some gait issues because that's where all the feet uh, motor for the feet is situated. The other one, this so this is going to be a subthalsial. The other one is if it goes down, and that's called transtentorial. Transtentorial herniation is when it's just going downward. That is a few different types. Um, the first type you can have, we'll call this uncle. So un in uncle herniation, what you're having is the uh, uncle part, which is f uh, found in the temporal lobe, uh, begins to herniate. And primarily what it's going to affect is going to be the um, oculomotor nerve. You get the compression. So you get oculomotor com nerve compression. You're also going to get the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers um, are also going to be compressed as well. Um, now, what does the oculomotor nerve compression do? Oculomotor nerve compression, you're going to get a, uh, the, the pupil is going to be a down and out. 
down and out. So if this is an eye, the uh, and this is going to be the nose here, uh, the pu the eye eye will go down here. Actually, if I can just if I can just go, it's going to be actually here. So it's going to be a down and out look. Um, the other thing that you're going to have is going to be um, is going to be the uh, the parasympathetic fibers are going to be affected, so you're going to get a dilated pupil. And these are all ipsilateral, by the way. Just write that in ipsilateral. So whatever side it's on, that's that's where the actual uh, herniation is. Um, the other thing that you can have is this can also affect the um, posterior cerebral artery. You can get an infarction, and that again that affects the occipital lobe. So you can get more visual disturbances. So primarily when you want to think of uncle herniation, you think of primarily visual disturbances. Um, the other one that you can have is going to be a cerebellar tonsillar. Let's write that in there. Basically, this the cerebellar tonsillar herniation. Um, and so what's happening is your cere cerebellum is actually going down through the... Uh, form in magnum and this is going this is called coning and this is obviously going to be very dangerous and it can lead to a coma and then um, death um, the next one that we're going to want to talk about so that's going to be uh, dura matter the next one that we're going to want to talk about is going to be um, well actually before we go on to that let's talk about the innervation uh, innervation is important um, topic to discuss dura matter this is where you actually feel pain uh, now, what if you have a tumor that says it's supratentorial? Well, supratentorial tumors, um, the the area is going to be innervated primarily by the trigeminal. So your symptoms are going to be related to the face and forehead. Um, now, if you have a septentorial uh, tumor or you know problem there. Um, your the uh, this is going to be innervated by the cervical nerves one two and three and here you're going to get pain in the back of the neck now if someone has meningitis that's going to be pain all over plus you know their neck as well so you're going to get both of that meningitis now we can actually go ahead and we can move on to um, arachnoid matter Arachnoid matter is going to be right below the dura matter, and it's going to have little. Uh, it's going to be uh, primarily uh, filled with CSF, um, which allows for the buoyancy of the brain, um, and it's connected to the the, the pia matter through those uh, little fibers that, that dip down. Um, now, um, if you kind of look up, you do have these things here called the arachnoid granulations that comes straight out of the arachnoid in the, into the superior sagittal sinus. Those are important because those absorb CSF um, and allow it to, to reflow again. Now, um, you do pretty much the um, arachnoid matter is, cons is, is right on top of uh, dura matter except in uh, certain situations. And in those situations, it's called a cistern. So let's just kind of talk about all the different cisterns that are there. The main one is going to be the cisterna magna. Cisterna. Now the cisterna magna is located uh, in between the cerebellum, the inferior part of the cerebellum, and the brain stem. That's going to be cisterna magna. Um, and it also, you know, we have the fourth ventricle here. The fourth ventricle is actually continuous uh, uh, with the... Uh, form in Magendai. And that's where it's going to get his uh, CSF flow from. So it continues with the, C, uh, the CSF of the spinal subarachnoid space. The other one uh, is going to be the pontine cistern. And the pontine cistern, which you want to think of it as, it's kind of like in this area right here in front. You can't really see it because it's, it's on the side. And um, it, surround, it surrounds the... Uh, thing. And it's going to be from the foramen. Leshkai. It's kind of it's, it's continuous with that, 
Then you have the interpeduncular uh, cistern, which is right above the uh, pond, uh, pons. You have the supercellular cistern, which is right above the uh, pituitary gland. And then you have the quadrennal cistern, which is going to be on top of the uh, cerebellum. So those are going to be pretty much all your uh, cistern spaces. Now, the other thing that you also want to know um, as we get into pia matter, so if I kind of can really quickly, if I can just draw out, this is your hemispheres of your brain. And it goes down, and then you have the midbrain uh, pons and medulla, and so this is this is your spinal cord. Now, uh, your pia matter is going to be obviously it's going to be right, oh, you know, attached right close to it. It's going to be completely attached. It follows every single groove. Okay, but your arachnoid matter. Your arachnoid matter goes around like that. It's going to attach to every groove. But then it'll actually continue down all the way, much farther down. And this is at the level of uh, L1. And this is at the level of S2. Um, and then, of course, your dura matter is around that even as well. And so... Um, this area right here is the uh, conus medullaris. This part right here is the conus medullaris. And you have basically, um, from the pia matter, you have all these projections, which is called the uh, cauda equina, which is going out like that. Um, now, this is important because this area right here is all filled with CSF fluid. So, um, when you want to do a spinal tap, that's why you want to do it uh, between like L5, L4, and L5, because you can you can get the, you can get the spinal uh, fluid without damaging the spinal cord. Okay, so now what we're going to take a look at is going to be the um, different types of hemorrhages, because that's going to be important. So let's t take a look at hemorrhages. Now we have three types of hemorrhage. The first one is going to be well, four types of hemorrhage. Epidural hemorrhage. Epidural hemorrhage takes place between the two layers of um, dura matter. So if we have the periosteal layer and we have the um, meningeal layer, between these we have uh, arteries and we also have veins we have veins. Now the artery and vein here, this is actually the middle meningeal artery and vein. 